Welcome everyone. Today we're going to begin looking at the geography of Southeast Asia and Oceania. And this is the last unit for the trimester. We are very near the end here. Today's essential question is how does physical geography vary throughout this vast region? We're covering enormous territory with a variety of different types of geography. So I want to begin with Southeast Asia. So Southeast Asia is really two distinct regions. It includes the southeastern corner of the Asian mainland. So if you take a look here, you see there's China, and then just south of China, this is the region that we're looking at. It also includes a great number of islands, and you'll see all these islands down here. And they're um, pretty large number of islands and fairly large islands in some cases. Most of the islands, we talked about this term with regard to Japan, but I wanted to um, just remind you of it again, are archipelagos. And an archipelago is a group of islands. So here we have islands here, groups of islands. So back to Southeast Asia then. So Southeast Asia lies on two peninsulas. And you remember a peninsula is a body of land that sticks out into the water. One of these is Indochina, the Indochinese Peninsula, and that's located up here. It's south of China, and it has kind of a rectangular shape, or I don't know, it looks kind of like a dragon to me a little bit. And then the Malay Peninsula, and you'll see it's very long. It's a narrow strip of land, about 700 miles long. And most of the islands are part of archipelagos. You can see this is Indonesia. It's a whole series like this is part of Indonesia. This is part of Indonesia. It's, this is part of Indonesia. And then the Philippines also archipelagos, a whole series of islands. So examples of this are the Philippines and the Malay archipelagos. Um, and so, and this is Malaysia has a series of islands as well. The dominant uh, physical feature, I think, in this region, or the most important one that we're going to talk about, because we're covering a lot of territory today, is the Mekong River. And the Mekong River begins all the way up in China, and it crosses several nations, comes down through, um, through Thailand and down into Laos and Cambodia, um, before ending as a wide delta along the Vietnamese coast, the coast of Vietnam here. Volcanoes are an important part of this region as well. We talked about the Ring of Fire, and Southeast Asia and Oceania both are part of the Ring of Fire. We're part of the Ring of Fire too, right? Over here, here's Mount St. Helens. It was just the anniversary of the, the eruption of Mount St. Helens. But this whole entire region down here in the um, Indonesian, uh, Indonesia, for example, is mostly made up of volcanoes or that's how the islands were formed. So this volcanoes are an important part of this region. And plate tectonic activity, earthquakes, and tsunamis are have a big impact on the region as well. So welcome to the islands. I want to shift from Southeast Asia to Oceania. We're really covering multiple places today, like I said. Welcome to the islands. Oceania, it's called Oceania because you think ocean. There's lots and lots of islands. And nobody, someone asked me last week, uh, nobody knows exactly how many islands exist in the Pacific Ocean, but some geographers estimate that there are more than 20,000 different islands. A lot of them are really tiny. A few of them are very large. So as a group, the Pacific Islands are called Oceania. And so you have examples. Some of them are large islands where you have, you know, lots of people living there. Some of them are very tiny islands that are uninhabited. No one lives there. So all of the na nations, all of the countries in Oceania, except for Nauru, are island groups. So mostly when we talk about the, the nations in this region, it like, for example, the Marshall Islands, it's not just one island, it's a whole bunch of small islands that make up one nation, one country. And so you can see some of these, we're not going to, I'm not going to make you memorize all these. There are tiny, tiny, lots of tiny, and they're small, small nations as they are. Um, everything from the Marshall Islands to Fiji, maybe you've heard of Fiji, uh, French Polynesia, um, and the federated the federal states of Micronesia. So lots of different lots of different island nations. You might notice also Hawaii is located here in the Pacific. Really Hawaii I'll I'll, I'll group Hawaii is separate but it's also a part of this Pacific island region. 
So some of the countries, these are countries you need to know that are island groups, are Fiji, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, the Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. And most people also group into this Oceania region, um, New Zealand and Australia. Australia is a continent in and of itself, but the islands of Oceania usually are included with it into this region of Oceania. Now, something that I always find interesting, so the Philippines and Indonesia, right? Here's the Philippines, which is a series of islands. Indonesia, which is clearly a series of islands. And other islands that are near the mainland part of Southeast Asia, um, they're considered part of Southeast Asia um, rather than Oceania just because of cultural ties with Asia. I want to talk about there's three major Oceania island groups. So these three major island groups are Melanesia. Um, this uh, comes from the term Black Islands, referring to the skin tone of the people, actually. Um, and so here's where the Melanesian islands are. These are mostly larger islands. Micronesia, micro means small. These are small islands up here. And then Polynesia, which means many islands. And Polynesia, Hawaii, is actually include, included as part of Polynesia. And New Zealand is part of Polynesia as well. So there are different kinds of islands, um, islands that are both high islands and low islands. And one reason that geographers don't really know the number of islands in Oceania is that the number changes. So erosion causes some islands to vanish, while other forces, volcanic forces, create new islands. Um, most Pacific islands fall into two categories. So one of these categories are what are called high islands. And these are islands that are created by volcanoes. You can see here's an example here. These islands usually can support more people. They have more fertile soil. Um, the islands of Melanesia, for example, are part of this. The second group of these islands are what are called low islands. And these are made mostly of coral reefs or atolls. They're small and infertile. Um, they include a lot of the islands of Micronesia. These islands are at risk of, um, as waters rise because of climate change, they're at risk of disappearing. Although a few of Oceania's islands are large in size, most are small. And if you added all of the land area of these islands together, the total would be smaller than the area of Alaska. So it's a, even all together, it's relatively small in far, as far as territory. So um, Oceania's many islands are not rich in natural resources, in part because they're small and in part because of how they're formed. Not a lot of natural resources in most, ca most cases. The low islands in particular, they have poor soil. Um, they can't, you can't even grow things on some of those islands without doing a great deal of, of fertilizing. And then um, these islands lack minerals. So there's a general scarcity of resources that's made it difficult to develop industry in these areas. There's a lot of beauty that they have, and tourism is one of the industries that they've relied on, in part because there aren't a lot of other opportunities available. Now, in addition to the countries of Oceania, there are actually um, different other nations of the world have territories in this region, including the United States. So I wanted you to have uh, write down a few of these. Um, there are a variety of U.S. territories in Oceania. In addition to Hawaii, as I said, um, there are the Northern Mariana Islands, Guam, um, and American Samoa. I'd like you to write those down because those are the biggest ones. Um, there's also Midway, which is essentially a wildlife refuge, and some uninhabited islands. These played an important role like in World War II, where fighting took place, Wake Island, the Johnston Atoll, Baker Island, Howland Island, Jarvis Island, and Kingman Reef. I want to shift gears away from those small islands and take a look at a different island, and that is New Zealand, which is really two islands actually, majestic New Zealand. So New Zealand has two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, and running down the center of the South Island is a 300 mile mountain range called the Southern Alps, and you can see um, it's very beautiful. This range has 16 peaks over 10,000 feet high. So to give you an idea, that basically, um, that means they're like Mount Hood or Mount Jefferson. And it also has over 360 glaciers. 
Um, the North Island ter uh, Territory has very hilly ranges and a volcanic plateau, but it's much less mountainous than the South Island. The North Island has fertile farmland and forests that supports the timber industry. And swift moving rivers and underground, underground volcanic steam have both, have both, both these things have allowed people to generate electricity for New Zealand. Australia, on the other hand, is very flat. Australia is the smallest continent on earth. So, you know, we don't, we talk about islands in the region. Australia is in fact a continent, not really an island. Um, it is also the flattest of the continents. And the elevation is not the only difference between Australia and New Zealand. For example, Australia has very few rivers. Um, the whole middle part of Australia called the outback is very dry. Forestry is not a major industry in Australia, but the country is rich in minerals. It is the world's leading exporter, uh, leading supplier of diamonds, of opals, of lead, and of coral. Along Australia's northeast coast lies one of the wonders of nature, and that is the Great Barrier Reef. And the Great Barrier Reef is often called the world's largest coral reef, although it's really um, a 1,250 mile chain of more than 2,400 reefs and islands. Some 400 species of coral are found there. So that's the end for today. I want you to take a look at your output assignment. Use the link on the announcement page to go to the Sotera website to complete the map assignment for today. Thanks a lot and have a good day.